It seems like everyone on YouTube talks about mixing like it's the most important part of making music, but here's a question. How important is mixing really? So we're gonna explore this together in this video. We're gonna talk about mixing, and I'm not gonna just talk about it, but I'm gonna show you a pre-mixed track of mine. We're gonna see how it sounds and see if mixing is really the most important thing compared to the actual mix. Now, before we do that, you need to understand that mixing is actually one of the final steps in making a track. It's one of the last things that you do before sending it off for distribution or whatever it is that you wanna do with your music. So what happens before mixing? Well, obviously we've got writing and the producing and recording. So for us to understand how important mixing is, we also need to talk about how important those other things are too, because if mixing is the most important, then we need to ask, most important compared to what? Well, what about writing? I don't think it takes a super genius to know that writing is very important. There's a reason why most popular artists are either not the writers of the songs they release at all, or they are co-writers and have a team of writers. They're actually in a room with professional writers who are usually doing most of the heavy lifting. Because it turns out that record labels know something that you don't, and that is that the song is so important that if you bet on the right artist but don't have the right song, then it just became 100 times harder to make that artist successful. See, artists alone are not successful. It's artists, and then you need to pair them with killer songs. Whenever you think about a popular artist, you're never just thinking about the artist. You're probably also associating that artist with specific songs specific things that make you think about that artist. It's not just like a random person. So what does that mean for you and me, who probably don't have a team of writers or are not on publishing deals, which you probably shouldn't be on a pub deal anyway? That means that we should stop and realize that our songs are more important than we probably think they are. It's like that saying, garbage in, garbage out. I know a lot of people will say that the songs out today are horrible and crappy and all that stuff, but you need to realize that the interests people have in songs they hear are always changing. And while it's easy to say that labels just dump tons of marketing money into it, there is a harsh truth that Billie Eilish doesn't just get millions of streams because the label spends money on marketing. People are only gonna listen to music that they actually like. And I would argue that no one watching this video, none of you, is going to listen to music that you feel is being shoved down your throat. And labels know this. So while you may not like like the songs that are popular, Lord knows I don't like most of them either. The songs are clearly resonating with the majority of listeners who are interested in that music. And that brings me to the topic of this video. How much of that, listeners being interested in that music, how much of that is because of mixing? I want you to think about that for a second. How important do you think on a scale of like one to 10 is the mix on that? Here's another way of thinking about it. If the mix was totally different, but it still sounded good, would it matter? I don't think so. If some famous song was mixed totally different, different tonal choices, different compression choices, even different reverb and delay choices, then I really don't think that would impact whether the song is loved or not. Unless the mix just totally sucked, which is a, a very different thing. So that's not really a great case for mixing being the most important thing so far. And to be clear, I think there is a lot of music out there with really subpar mixing that is very successful. I think of Jacob Collier as a great example. A lot of his early music was not mixed well. I, I think he was doing it himself. It lacks top end clarity, it's a bit muddy, it's messy, the drums aren't as prominent tonally as they should be. In other words, like the kick and the snare sounds are just not hitting the way they probably should. The vocals aren't super crisp. You know, I can break down more than just that, but the point is that he is wildly successful as a creative, but his mixes for a lot of his music early on, which was also successful, was not that great, but his songs are killer. His performances in production are killer. I'm a huge fan of Jacob Collier, so this is not a knock on Jacob Collier. So that's the songwriting. Pretty darn important. But the song is really only as good as the recording that we hear it in to a certain degree, right? Like a song on just piano and vocals or a work tape is a lot different than a fully produced track, right? So that brings us to production or producing. This is where we go from a demo to ready to mix and everything in between. Now this gets a bit complicated because while a lot of people have this really narrow view of producing, producing is actually a very broad term. It includes a lot of different things. It's not just sitting at a desk and, you know, plunking out MIDI and then throwing some loops in. That's like the most bare bones version of producing. Producing is making choices around the arrangement, how to make the song dynamic, choosing the instrumentation. What are those instruments actually doing throughout the entire song? Then recording all those instruments. And not just that, but making sure those instruments are recorded not only properly in terms of gain staging and mic placement, but more importantly, getting killer performances. I can tell you, I've worked with probably hundreds of musicians over my career. There's nothing worse than struggling in the studio to get amazing performances. And if you cannot get amazing performances, it becomes very hard to get amazing production. 
lines. Yeah, we can edit rhythm, we can time align, we can pitch correct, but you know what we can't fix? I can't fix a vocal that is not dynamic or a vocal that is not expressive. I cannot fix a guitar part where you can hear all sorts of weird noises from the pick that, you know, the guitar player is accidentally hitting the strings all the time or the player's hand that should not be there on the fretboard. I cannot fix a drummer who has super inconsistent hits on the snare or the kick without doing sample replacement, which I'm all for layering, but it shouldn't be done because you are literally not getting a good performance. That whole process is all about accentuating what was already awesome. Producers are the ones who are making the decisions from the moment the song is ready to record till the song is actually handed off for the mixing stage, whether that's mixed by the producer or a separate mixing engineer. So let me ask you, how important do you think that is? Now, while you're thinking about that, let's actually take a look at an example of produce work that is not mixed. That's not saying that these tracks have no effects or no plugins at all because producers are still working with plugins and effects. It's not like a black and white producers don't use plugins and then mixing engineers do. That's just ridiculous. But I'm going to show you a pre-mixed track and then I'm going to show you that mixed track to compare it to. And as you listen, I want you to think and ask yourself, is the mix really the reason this song works? Is mixing clearly the most important thing? So here's a track of mine. It's called Cloud9. This is one that I did actually remove all the effects and plugins from this on the pre-mix version, except for those that I baked into the sounds like the guitar effects. And what you're going to hear is just a static mix. In other words, the only thing done is volume and nothing else. And real quick before that, I wanna let you know that we are officially running our holiday sale for my production program, Producer Accelerator. It's 50% off, it's the only time of year that we do this. And everything that we're talking about in this video is taught in depth to help you master production and also actually the mixing process as well. I have a link in the description, back to the video. All right, so I'm gonna show you a couple different pieces of the track here. We're gonna go ahead and start with the really big intro, which is heavily focused on the instrumental and not vocals yet. So let's take a look at this big intro here. This is not mixed. Okay, let's just stop right there. That sounds great. <laughs> like, that already sounds better than most amateur producer stuff that is already mixed, right? Okay, so let's actually take a listen to that big intro now on the mixed version. All right, so this is the mixed version, and by the way, here are all the plugins on it in the actual mix window. You can see most of these only have one plugin, some have more, this is on the drums, but most of this stuff, this is all guitars right in here, which guitar rig is the actual amps uh, that we're running it through, so that's really just one effect on it, the whole thing. You can see a bunch of this stuff in here has literally not a single plugin at all. So let's actually take a listen to that big chorus now. Can you tell the difference? I mean, I can. There's there's more low end, there's more clarity of the mix, the drums are popping a little bit more. It's obviously a little bit louder, that's because I do have some stuff on the mix bus here. But, let's go back again, back to the pre-mixed. Now let's go to the mix. If you were to show this to someone that does not actually understand audio engineering and does not have a very, very good ear for this stuff, I'm just telling you, they would not be able to tell you the difference. Just saying, they're not gonna be able to tell you the difference. Let's actually take a look at a verse with vocals. So this is verse one. So again, there's there's nothing on these vocals, okay? These are completely dry. Let's take a listen. Three o'clock in the morning and I'm still on a waking bed. Just listen to the instrumental here. The instrumental sounds fantastic. Let's just kind of forget the vocals. They're very clearly dry. There's no reverb, there's no delay. Just listen to the instrumental. I've got this rhythm inside me and I can't get it out of my head. Very clear. The separation between the bass and that guitar and more of the mid-range stuff is fantastic. Let's listen once everything kicks in now. I can't even hear. Think about the bass. The bass sounds great. My thoughts is like a non-stop radio. There's no EQ, there's no compression, there's no reverb, there's no delay, there's absolutely nothing on this. The only thing to me that sounds off is the vocals. And that's because the vocals have no compression, no EQ, there's no reverb, there's no nothing on these vocals. So they're obviously gonna sound very strange because they're dry. All right, let's take a listen to the actual mix now on the verse, verse one. Three o'clock in the morning and I'm still on a waking bed. All right, that low end is definitely a lot more present. The vocal hat now has that spatial stuff. You can hear that, you can even hear the kind of the, that reverb spraying out a little bit. So it's gonna tuck those vocals into the mix a little bit more. It's gonna make everything actually sound like it's in the same environment. I've got this rhythm inside me and I can There's more crispiness on the vocals. They're a little brighter, a little bit more shimmer on them as well. Let's go to where it gets big again. All right, and this is where the drums come in. I can't even hear my thoughts, it's like a non-stop 
All right, there's a vocal throw there. Non-stop radio, non-stop radio. That's a cool little spatial effect, right? Cool little, you know, fun thing to throw in there. The low end sounds better. Very clearly the low end sounds better. A lot more defined, a lot more thumpy on the low end. Everything else though, it kind of sounds the same, apart from that of the vocals. This is what it feels like when the music takes control. I wanna talk about that music takes control. Let's actually go to the premix. When I say music takes control, I want you to listen to how it sounds. This is one thing where this is the beauty of compression. The phrase music takes control really sticks out when there's no compression, listen to this. And the music takes control. So on the word control, the way the vowel sprays out, it's really not the most pleasant thing in the world in the premix version. So this is why compression is so important. If we go back to this and we actually listen to that phrase again in the mix version, really, really, really pay attention to the word control. Music takes control. Sounds a lot better. So is that is that imp important? Absolutely, that's important. That is super important. Very, very, very important. The low end sounding better. Very, very important. Okay, let's go ahead and take a listen to the chorus now. This is the premix. I close my eyes and it takes me to another world. I'm on cloud nine and I cannot get enough. The instrumental sounds fantastic still on this. It really does. The instrumental sounds super, super good, super tight. The drums still sound awesome on this. The bass still sounds awesome. Yes, we need more low end. We need a little bit more of that thump, but it sounds really great. The main thing is these vocals. Again, it's just the vocals. The vocals are just poking out too much on this. They're not compressed. Here's the, here's the mix version. I close my eyes. The vocals are under much better control. There's way more control in the vocals. And obviously the spatial effects are really making these vocals sound a lot bigger. Let's take a look at verse two, because verse two, some really cool things happen vocally that we're gonna see here that are definitely more effects based. Here we go, this is verse two. There's no telling when the bug will bite. I've got a fever in the Limelight. It's so contagious, better check your pulse. So infectious, you might lose your mind. Okay, just that much. And on Lose Your Mind, again, the vocals are just a little bit out of control in terms of the dynamic of it. And you'd heard a little bit of a delay reverb thing in there. That was something I actually baked in. I produced it that way. I wanted it to sound that way. I knew for sure it was gonna sound that way. Let's listen to verse two mixed. This is where it's really cool because I, as a mixing engineer, can also get really creative. I put like a flange on the vocals. I made them sound very, very weird and stuff. And this is a really cool effect. Think about this. Does that really make so much of a difference that if I just process verse two the same as verse one, would the song still be good? Probably, yeah. It's a telling me the bug will bite I've got a fever and the key reads like light It's so contagious, better check your pulse So infectious, you might lose your that sounds killer. I love that. I love I love the vocal processing that I did on this. I was really excited about it to use some phaser on this. I used just Phase Mistress from uh, Sound Toys on it, and as well as a couple other things like Micro Shift. It sounds really cool. But again, if if those things were not on this vocal, in fact, let's just go ahead and turn that stuff off of the vocal. It still sounds it sounds great. There's no telling when the bug will bite. I've got a fever and the cure is limelight. So clearly mixing is important, right? Like the mixed version is definitely better than the static version. I don't think anyone is gonna argue that. It's more defined, it's clear. The vocals in particular sound way more under control because of you know the compression, the spatial effects that add uniqueness and also that help the vocals blend with the instrumental as well so they don't feel like they're separated like they are in the static mix. But I have a feeling that some people are expecting a bigger difference, like expecting it to sound night and day different. And here's the thing, if you produce well, then it should not sound that much different. Mixing isn't about making something sound totally different. If it does, then that means the mix was probably going off the rails, right? Now, I think this makes a pretty clear case that the writing and producing part of the process are way more important than mixing if we're gonna start evaluating the actual order of importance. Now, before you get upset saying, I don't think mixing is important, I already said point blank that mixing is important. Jeremiah, can you, can you rewind the tape here? <laughs> So clearly mixing is important, right? Like the mixed version is definitely better than the static version. I don't think anyone is gonna argue that. It is important, <laughs> it is crucial. If you don't mix your music, then it is going to sound amateur. It's not gonna sound professional. But if you show that static mix of Cloud9 to someone, the vocals are really the only thing to me that sounds 
truly off and sounds actually distracting. The instrumental sounds great. The overall arrangement, the performances, sounds, all that sounds great. Meaning what? That means that the average people listening, they might be put off slightly by the fact that the vocals have no effects. But I'm gonna say that a lot of people would legitimately not even notice because most people are not listening to that stuff when they listen to music. And in most cases, they don't even notice all the cool automated delays and reverbs that I'm doing. So when I show stuff like this to my friends who are not musicians, the parts that I'm usually like, oh, this is like the super good part. I automated this and did this, 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 this. Those are the parts they usually don't even notice because that's not what they're listening to. I want to show you this because there is so much out there talking about mixing, making it sound like mixing is like this process that can turn a piece of crap into magic and it's a lie. It's not true. You being a better producer and better at everything that happens before mixing is going to impact your music more than anything, period. I made a whole video talking about how to actually build dynamic productions like this one. And that is a production process. And that is a producing process. And if you want to make your music better with just one thing to basically make your music better automatically, you can watch the video right here. We'll see you there.